Hello? Anybody home? Hello, 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 hello. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. I got my postcard today. Hooray! Your dune take was bad. Uh, you know, I, uh, I can't take it back, unfortunately. Come back to Brazil? Uh, maybe, but not now. I just... <laughs> Maybe another time. Um, classic awful movie take for Maya. You want to talk about Dune? You guys really passionate about Dune? Here's the thing. Here's the problem. I have never seen Dune. I don't know what Dune is. Okay? My boyfriend said that it's kind of like Star Wars with Game of Thrones houses. I have not seen Star Wars or Game of Thrones. So I don't know what I was supposed to do with that information. Um, Coots, Audible, Hearts, PJE. HKAS, Strange, JPS, Sorath, Direwolf, Noah, thank you. Um, but the thing about the thing about that movie when he said that, I'm not gonna give you spoilers. Uh, the thing about that movie when he said that is I was expecting to see like houses that were in the style, like the aesthetic style of Game of Thrones. So I was like waiting for it to wow. see their houses. Maya Hichia. Because that's what I thought he meant, because I've never seen Game of Thrones. I now understand that that's not what he meant. Keisha, thank you wow. for the 18 months. Alvius Stance. Um it has Zendaya and special popcorn buckets. I did eat popcorn not out of a special bucket. I did see Zendaya and that was cool. I people pog. Wow. My Thank you. People struggles to understand pop culture concepts. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if it made no sense to me because I fell asleep for some of it. People pog. Wow. And My I don't know how much cheer. of it I fell asleep for or if it's because I don't know what Dune is. Logan or maybe it's just a combination of both. Um, but it was very long. Um, wow. I also Maya read, thank you for the 23 months. I also don't like fighting. Like, I don't like Peepopog, watching wow. fighting. I don't like action movies. I don't like sword fighting. I really don't like that. And I don't like, like, wrestling and, like, hitting and guns and, like, Peepopog, bombs. Wow. Welcome back, Maya Hichia. So, thank you for the 17 months. So, I didn't like that bit. And... Um, I didn't like that they gave a bad name to worms, because worms are really important, and I also don't like that they gave a bad name to rats. Maya, what the fuck? What are you doing? Rash, thank you for the 57 months. Maya! Go! Thank you. Thank you for the tier three for 57 Welcome months. Back. That's crazy. Thank People you so much. Wow. Um, LSU, thank you. Sonatorium, Mac Poopy Pants, Lula May, thank you guys. People pog, wow. Um, yay. Yay. Uh, Zota Koala, thank People you. Pog, wow. Um, what did the term I Mr. Lawson. Axial Mars. Uh, yeah, one of the first wow. things that I recall Pogmania, in that movie love the streams. is... What did you think of the dragonfly-like helicopter things? People oh, I actually wow. thought those were cool. Welcome back, Alvius. Love Alvius. <laughs> I like love. those. I like the way that they move. I just remember, wow. like, watching that movie, and then at some point they said something like... And I don't think this is a... It's not a spoiler. I'm scared because y'all get so mad about spoilers. What are you I don't think it is a spoiler. They were just like, they said something that was like, the rats are calling a worm and something about spice. And I was like, what the fuck are we talking about? Let's fucking go! Axiom Mars thing with tier three. L. Okay. Wow. Burke. Thank you. Uh... Lubix, People thank you. Metrobes, thank wow. you. Um, Lucifer, wow. thank you. Hey, it's People Kev, wow. thank you. Uh, Chicken Nuggets, People thanks for the wow. bit. Um, if you don't know what spice is, did you watch the movie at all? I still don't know exactly what spice is. I thought it was a currency, but apparently it's like a drug. Um, but the other thing I'm confused about is it seems like it was everywhere, so I don't really get the problem. Worm poop is spice. So you're telling me worm poop is spice and worm pee is poison? I don't, I'm over it. 
I'm gonna be honest. I'm over the movie. I saw it. I was like, I, here's the thing. Here's what I will admit to. Here's what I will admit to. When I watched the whole, when I watched the movie, I understand. I understood that people would think it was really good. I knew when the movie ended. I went with like 13 people yesterday. Like a lot of people went to go see this movie with us. It was like a whole group, which is really cute. That there were like 13 people that all went to go see this movie at the same time. But I knew when everyone got up at the end of the movie, they would be like, that was so good. I didn't like it because I didn't know what was going on and I also don't like action. But I, uh, I get it. I get why people really liked it. I could tell that it was a good movie. I bet if I watched the first one, I would think it was really good. Minus all the action. And minus the bad name that they gave Worms. That's my take. Not that anyone asked. I see Eduardo in chat. Hello. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, Brazil. That's the plan for today. Um, and oh, wow. I'm going to show you guys. Welcome back, boss. I Hello. Thanks. I'm back. Um, I put all of the stories that I posted into an Instagram highlight so I can go through all of my stories and tell you guys about the trip. Good timing that Eduardo's here. Or Ed Edu Lucifer. Is using there he is. Oh, wow. Um, Watch nine plus ten. Rover Helio. What? Nineteen. Oh, because it's twenty-one months. Um, good timing that Eduardo's here. Eduardo was one of our guides in Brazil. Everybody say hi. Um, start at the beginning. No, I'm not gonna ban Eduardo, Joe. That's really mean. We'll start at the beginning. Um, was it humid there? Yes, I. We took the planes to Brazil. By the way, the travel was really easy. I thought it was going to be kind of crazy and, like, treacherous. Uh, but it was just two flights. Danny! Out. Thank you. Danny has a lot of footage, a lot of vlog footage to go through. <laughs> Yesterday, Space was uploading all the DSLR footage, like, flips footage. And it's, out. like, over 500 gigs. And Danny almost peed himself. Because he thought that was the vlog footage. People pog, wow. Danny loves footage. Danny loves footage. <laughs> Selfie, thank you. Beast, thank you. Reggie, People thank pog, you. Wow. Um, AJ, thanks. Anonymous, thank you for the like 10 gifted subs. Wahoo. So okay. For you. So, pog, wow. thank you. Hi, I'm Hi. so excited to see what you and Flip put out from this trip. Hush to love. Thank you. Did you learn any Portuguese? No. No. Um. So, the travel was really easy. Like, really easy. Corbin, thank you. People pog, wow. Lather, wow. thank you. Matt, thank you. The travel was really easy. Um, and then... People pog, wow. We 21, got there. 21, 21. Yes. Thank you. Um, we got there, we landed, and... There, the guides were there to pick us up. So we went to Brazil both with Purple Martin Conservation Association um, and with uh, an ecotourism company, which Eduardo is a part of. And so the ecotourism company picked us up at the airport. They had like a little sign that said like Purple Martin people, you know? And so we got off the plane and then we went to meet these guides. Colon and snake. Eduardo was like, Namar, Neymar, Namaru, thank you. Uh, Savage, thank you. And Eduardo was like, Brazil is nothing like Las Vegas. And I was like, I was looking around and I was like, yeah, like it doesn't look anything like Vegas. <laughs> like, you're right, it looks nothing like Vegas. And, I, and then he was like, no, I saw your video. And I was like, oh my God. Because <laughs> he just saw my, my Vegas vlog. And I was like, oh my God, small world. Eduardo found my channel in 2020 through... You will never guess. Someone guessed the game that he ultimately found my channel through. I'll give you a hint. It's a game I've never played. <laughs> and I didn't, I don't even know that I could, that I could say that I knew it existed. Fall Guys, Factorio CS, WoW, SM64, Raid, Chess, Animal Crossing. No, uh, Isle. <laughs> wow. Exploratory, thank you for the four months. Isle, like like the dinosaur game 
So he said that he's like really into Isle, and then he got on some like English server, and then when he got in the English server, he started getting English stuff on his on his YouTube algorithm, and Tiny Mike popped up. And so that's how he found I. Oh, he doesn't want me to talk about that. <laughs> Isle's cool, man. It's fine. It's fine. That's how we found my channel. Um, wow. And Crownham, thank you for the 56 months. Uh, so small world, though. Thank I was God. so wow. surprised. Um, and he was so surprised, I think. I think he had seen my name, but he hadn't like made oh, the God. connection wow. that it was me. Fault. And then at some point, sh briefly before, or like right before the trip, he like figured out that it was me. So crazy. Um, Fixter, thank you. Crispy, thank you. Crenum, thank you. Exploratory. Um, so, yeah. Um, but Eduardo was amazing the whole trip. Um, not only because he's amazing, but also because he understood what we were doing immediately. Right? Like, he knows what Alvea says. He knows, like, who I am. He knows what we do. And so he went so far out of his way the whole trip to, like, help us and translate everything for us and take us to places to get really good footage and and everything so it was it was really really great um super yeah super clutch he was amazing clap some chat for eduardo um thanks for gifting us up so yeah he was awesome um eduardo's gonna come to america surely i i told him he has to uh he was asking where he should come in america and i was like honestly wow. texas is not like, I would love to see you, but I don't know if you want to come to Texas because there's not, you know. People and he was like, wow. but Stompy. And I was like, oh, you're right. <laughs> come to Texas. So wow. I'll let you guys know Feels when Eduardo so comes to Texas. <laughs> Doc Pie, thank you. Um, I'll let you guys know. So when I got to the airport, first day in Brazil, it was very hot and very humid. We went to a hotel. I am actually dumb. Like, I'm sorry, I don't know why my mic's not doing how it is. I'm actually dumb because I didn't know how the AC worked in the first hotel. So it was super hot and humid and I spent the first night like laying on an empty mattress, like sweating the whole night. I did sleep, but we got in at like 3.30 in the morning. Um, and wow. I just like died the whole first night. It was really rough, um, but it was entirely my fault because there was AC in that hotel and I just didn't, I didn't know um, or I didn't know how to use it. So stupid. I then figured out how to use the AC. Don't worry. Um, Flip and I had two full days when we got there, and you didn't ask? No, I did not ask someone at the hotel in Portuguese at 3.30 in the morning. Talk. Wow. <laughs> I didn't go down to do that. If you, you think I would do that in an American hotel, you're wrong. I'm certainly not doing it in Brazil, <laughs> okay? There's no shot. There's no way. So I just slept. Um, oh yeah, I should have just said that. Thank you, Chatter. Next for next time. Um, and then I would simply rather die of heat. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Uh, so we had two full days, and um, Eduardo, I don't you you hardly ever mispronounce stuff. Your English is better than mine. Um, we had a few full days before people got there. The people that got there, we traveled with, um. Purple Martin Landlords. Do you guys know what that means? Landlords. Okay. So, Purple Martins, you guys know what that is. Songbird, right? Little birds. I've filmed them before. I've talked about them before. So, they, everywhere east of the Rocky Mountains in the U.S., the Purple Martins rely on human housing. So the house that we have in the birdhouse that we have in the pasture, the white gourds, the birds live in there. And then they migrate to the Amazon. So everybody that came on this trip is like a hardcore Purple Martin landlord that's been doing it for like 20 years. They got like Purple Martin tattoos. It's like their life. You know, they like love this shit. Like they love these birds. And so they they wanted to come to Brazil to see them in the Amazon and PMCA and this conservation or this uh, ecotourism group takes them out um, to see them in the Amazon. Um, and do you know the name in Portuguese? Eduardo, what's the name in Portuguese? <laughs> um, 
so we went with this group, but the group didn't get there. Mick, thank you. Damn. The group didn't get there until like two days after Flip and I got there, so we had a couple days to like chill. Wow. Um, Glad to see you survived Brazil. I did. I did. Um. And now I will just go through my Instagram story and I'll start showing you stuff because there's no way I remember all of this chronologically. No one got mugged in Brazil. I paid everyone first before they arrived. What? <laughs> People talk wow. <laughs> Jo, thank you. Okay, let's see. Ew, light noise. Yuck. Okay, let's see. Let's oh! Where's my camo? All right. All right. Day one. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Sorry, we were on a speedboat. <laughs> this was day one. Um, we went to go. Oh, we went to go find birds. It was five in the morning. Um, so purple martins they leave obviously at sunrise for the day, and then they come back at night. So you have two chances to see them during the day: sunrise and at night. This is us seeing them at sunrise. Those are all purple martins. Look at how many. This is probably not loud. Okay, great. Cattle egrets? How cute. Look at how cute. Wow, amazing. Um, this was the, uh, no, I did not stream there, but I made videos. I think there's six YouTube videos that are coming out of this trip. Isn't this the coolest thing you've ever seen? We stayed at this lodge, um, in the freaking Amazon rainforest, and it was beautiful. Like, the accommodations were amazing. Um, it was super, super nice. Um, and so this was like the lobby of the the hotel. Am, am I quiet? It looks fine on here. I feel like other people would say that. I did not see a harpy eagle and I did not see any dinosaurs. Um, this was my first bug sighting. It's a, it's a weevil and he's really cute. And I don't know what kind, um, but he was cute. Here, I'll turn my gate up. There you go. Weevil. Cute weevil. This sounds loud now. I can really, maybe I just need to turn myself down. Um, this is on the Rio Negro. This is on a boat. Wow, amazing, beautiful, incredible, insane. Honestly, it's actually insane. New shoes, yeah, these are my new boots. These are my new boots. This is also Rio Negro, check this out. That's the sound of the boat motor. But wait, listen to the, listen the birds. No boat motor. You can't hear that, can you? Cool, huh? Ooh, jump scare. <laughs> I will say I saw a lot less bugs than I expected. Um, a lot of birds, not a lot of mammals. So I heard a lot of cool bird noises, saw, saw a lot of new cool birds. It was cool because the people we were traveling with obviously love birds. And so they were like counting new bird species. They have like a list of how many birds they've seen. And this one lady at the end of the trip, um, she had found or had added like 85 new bird species to her lifetime list just from being there for like 10 days very cool um yes this was a jump scare this was at dinner um it's a little wooden carved sloth uh and i wanted to buy him but i was too afraid to ask so unfortunately i left him behind but he probably likes it here better than he would like it in america i found this cicada I don't think he was well, honestly, because uh, otherwise he wouldn't be Hi. letting me hold him like that. Oh. He's cute, though. Yeah, he's a big bug. Cute. <laughs> Cicada. Okay. <laughs> There's a big spider. It's called a golden something. That's all I got for you. Uh... 
I saw this when we were on a, a jungle hike um, through the Amazon. I wrote, he's literally just a baby because this is a baby. Um, and fun fact about the spider, the uh, if they bite you, they paralyze you for a couple hours. Not permanently though, just a couple hours. <laughs> the hand in this picture was our guide. Um, and he was so cool. His name's Leandro. Um, he grew up indigenous. This guy was so cool. There's an interview that I did with him that are going to go in the Amazon videos. Oh, he was so cool. Um, he grew up indigenous. So what he said to us is that he was like living in the jungle naked until he was 13 years old. And then when he was around 13, um, his family moved into like a more modern town or, or community uh and so and there were a lot of like indian people that moved there and so they started eating a lot of indian food like curry and stuff like that and he didn't like it because he was like this is not like the food that i grew up with and this doesn't feel like me and his dad was the leader of their indigenous community and he told his dad this is not indigenous like i don't want to i don't want to live like this i want to be myself and then he left at 14 um, and he came out to the jungle to be a tour guide. Crazy. Um, so now he's a tour guide at this. Uh, he's been doing it for, I think, like 20 years. Um, so he takes people into the rainforest and teaches them about everything. And he knows, like, it feels like he knows everything in there. It's so cool. Um, he has, like, all these tricks. And he told us about, like, there's this, like, ant nest you put your hand in it and they bite your hands and you like rub them all over your hands and it's mosquito repellent um so he did that which was kind of sad because all the ants died but no mosquitoes bothered him they have like a a bullet ant glove situation that i still don't fully understand about like you know becoming a man where you have you get bit by a bunch of or stung by a bunch of bullet ants bullet ants are like one of the highest pain scale insects uh, not the highest but like one of the highest um eduardo can tell you he's been he's been stung by one before um but yeah they have to put a glove on with bullet ants inside um so yeah he was very very cool um and it was really really interesting to talk to him we did a really cool interview with him i'm excited for you guys to see that interview um really nice he's really nice and he told me he taught me all about like this spider and this guy, this is a, uh, this is a weevil. I don't know the actual, I don't know the the common name for him. Um, I don't know the scientific name either. But uh, Le Leandro told me that uh, he makes holes in wood. <laughs> That's all he said. He was, and I don't think he thought he was that interesting. He just knew that I was really into bugs, and so every time he saw a bug, he would just like point it out. So I got to pick him up, and this guy makes holes in woods, and I thought he was really cute. This guy, baby praying mantis, you kidding me? Oh, you hear that sound? Listen to that. Crazy. That's a bird? And they call it, um... They say it's, it's a bird. I forget what it's called. But they say it's like the police of the jungle because every time they hear any movement, they just start alarming off. And Flip and I kept calling them nature's narc, but no way anybody told us that. I think we made that up because I don't think they say that at all. But it was they were saying something like the police, <laughs> like they act like the police or they like tattletale on people. And now I forget because we kept calling them that. I forget what they're actually called. <laughs> um, but you hear those like everywhere. Um, so... They're cool. Eduardo said it, did he? I missed it. I don't see it. Um, so yeah, those were cool. Oh, screaming. Let's see what they look like. Screaming. <laughs> the thumbnail. There it is, doing its thing. That's a loud bird. 
couple more. Nature's narc, everybody. So you can hear him here. Cool, huh? I found these little mushrooms. They were jiggly. Kind of cute. I don't know what they are. I don't know anything about them. Fun game. Find the moth. I posted this on my Instagram story. Do you see the moth? Or no, I posted this on Twitter, huh? I could not find it. I can't find it. It's right there. There, found it. It's right there. No, I found it. I stared at that for so long. I see him. I can't find it. There. <laughs> In the center. He's right here. That's a moth. Here he is. See, there's his little legs. Cool, huh? So cool. So cool. Um, this is Leandro showing us a bird eating spider. You can hear nature's dark. Bird eating spider. What's cool about this spider, too, is it's not even big. Um, in Brazil, they have Goliath bird-eating spiders. This is just a normal bird-eating spider. Um, let me show you a Goliath one. Goliath bird-eating spider. Da -da 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 -ba -ba -ba. They're big. Um, big. Um, and yes, they eat birds. Smile. Pretty cool. Um, I saw one of these as a specimen. Uh, I didn't see any live ones, um, in the, in the wild. But it would have been really cool if I did. Sloth's corn, thank you for the eight months. Um, that could eat a chihuahua. Mm, no. This is a little owl um, that I saw. I visited a uh, a local community on the river. There's like 17 families that live there and like 50 people total. It was really cool. They showed us uh, they showed us a lot about how they live and like what they eat um, and how they prepare the food that they eat. Um, and they showed us all these. They grow a lot of plants. Um, a lot of plants for, like, medicine and stuff like that. I ate a marijuana leaf. <laughs> Mekdi, thank you for the eight months. Uh, which, I don't know. Um, it was fine. It was, like, really sour. It was just the, it was, like, the leaf. And he was just like, here, eat this. And I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, for, for any of you curious, it, I did, it didn't eat very much. And I didn't feel anything. I don't know if you even can by eating the leaves. I don't think that the leaves are what people, I don't know anything about marijuana. Um, and I ate some other plants. Uh, one plant he gave me, he was like, here, eat this. I just stopped asking because he kept giving me plants to eat and I just trust him with my entire life. Uh, and I was like, oh, what's this one? And he's like, it, it numbs your mouth. And I chewed it, my whole mouth went numb. <laughs> my whole mouth. And I was like, oh, I don't like that. <laughs> Um, thank you for the 17 months. Uh, it, uh, yeah, it made my whole mouth numb. It's kind of weird. Um, Jambu is what that was. They, they put that in a lot of cocktails too, they, in a lot of alcohol. Um, and it, it makes your mouth tingle. But when you just chew on the leaf, your whole mouth gets numb. Um, he showed me a plant, uh, that he said if you heat it up, and then squeeze the juices in your eyes every three days, it gets rid of cataracts. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I don't, I don't have any cataracts, but that's crazy. Anna, thank you. Little chicken pot pie, thank you. Um, 
I don't know. They do a lot of crazy stuff out there. I don't know anything about it, but it was really interesting. Um, they don't use any pesticides also, which is really fascinating as an ag major. Um, and they only water supplement supplement supplementally, um, which makes sense because it's the rainforest. One thing I was not prepared for in the rainforest, I didn't know, is that... Oh, I guess I did know, but I didn't think about it. Is it dumps rain? It rains a lot. And I know that sounds really stupid when I say it like that, but it's just like out of nowhere, it dumps rain. And then it goes away and it's beautiful and then it dumps rain again. It's, it's like shocking. Also, huge mistake. Huge mistake. And it does not rain that much in Texas. I brought a rain jacket that's not a rain jacket. And I thought it was, but it's, it's like weather resistant, not waterproof. So it did nothing, nothing. It just soaked all the way through the rain jacket. It was, I didn't have a rain jacket. So one of the guys on the tour gave me a poncho Hi, and I wore that. Welcome back. Darwin, thank you for the 10 months. Um, so that was really nice of him. But, uh, but yeah, this, in this community, there was this little owl. This is a good picture because I was really close to him. Um, I think that somebody found him like orphaned or something and is taking care of him in this community. Uh, and they do the same thing with, uh, with macaws. Um, oh, this was a, a hawk that I saw at that community too, who they say has been going back for like 17 years or something. This is a macaw. So in this community, every year, I guess they take in a couple baby macaws that they find in the rainforest. Um, and they like supplementally feed them and then they take off and whatever. In the U.S., this would be a huge problem, right? Like, if people found wild macaws and took care of them and potentially imprinted them and then they were friendly and, like, were around people, it'd be really dangerous for people and these birds. But uh, this is a community, like, on the river, a very small community, and it's in protected forest. Um, so I think it's fine. It, but it was really interesting uh, that they, they get this close to them um, and, you know, help them through being babies. Um, so yeah, he's eating a fruit here, but is it, he was a baby, he's a baby, is Tico, it was really, it was a trip seeing Tico in the wild, what was his name, I think their names are Romeo and Juliet, <laughs> I don't know which one this is, unless I'm getting them confused with someone else, I don't remember, uh, but yeah, it was very cool, um, Sloth waffles, thank you. Because they live in a protected forest, they're, they have to... How many... What resources they use out of the forest is now regulated um, by, I guess, environmental NGOs and the government. And so if they have no tallies of, like, overusing resources or misusing resources, then they get... Um, oh, what's the word? They get from the government. They get, um, oh my god. Stipend is, no, um, kind of. Subsidized, thank you. They get, like, subsidized, uh, or they get, like, a grant, sure. Um, and they went 10 years without having any, like, tallies, um, or doing anything wrong, uh, or, or, like, overusing resources, and so they got, like, a, they got subsidized by the government, um, to build things in their village, and they built a restaurant and a public bathroom, which is fascinating um, because it's only a, a, a community of 50 people. You know, they obviously don't need a restaurant or a bathroom. It just, like, shows ecotourism is a huge part of their economy, um, so much so that they put this money that they got from the government into increasing um, ecotourism. So... I thought that was really interesting. This is still at the community. Um, this is on the boat. We were on a lot of speedboats, guys. <laughs> a lot of speedboats uh, going out a lot on the, the Rio Negro, looking for birds, filming stuff. It was really pretty. Lots of dragonflies, lots of, lots of bugs. Um, then, oh, oh, this is gonna get loud. Okay, so this whole thing is we came here to find white-winged parakeets. White-winged parakeets 
um, are just like these little birds and, and they roost here, like in the city, in Manaus. And they roost on all these trees where the leaves are missing. You know that they sit here because all the leaves fell off because they all sit there. This is so funny. This, I was trying to film the birds in the sky and a truck honked and Lynn, <laughs> this wonderful woman who was amazing. We did an interview with her as well. She got so spooked and so funny. <laughs> She's so funny. Okay, birds, look, they're here. So many. Wait, bird hell, you have to hear it. Dude, I've told you guys how loud parrots are. Imagine this many screaming. Wait, Eduardo sighting? Sorry, Eduardo. But he's here. Yeah, these are parakeets. Whoa! <laughs> there he is! <laughs> Parrot hell. There he is. I didn't take this picture. I just wanted to show what they looked like. Um, yeah, parakeets. White-winged parakeets. They're cute though, huh? Um, it's really interesting, though, to see them in such an urban environment. You know, obviously, normally they would not be in one, but they've adapted to, uh, to roosting here. So those were white-winged parakeets. Dude. Again, bees, beetles, beetles, bee rhinoceros, beetle, butterflies. Yes, they're real. Grasshopper, look at those wings. Giant grasshopper, cicada, moth. Okay. This was the coolest thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> coolest thing I've ever done in my freaking life. Um, we got to see the collections at the National Institute of Amazonian Research. What the frick? We met with an entomologist there, and he took us in the bug collection. Guess how many bugs they have? Guess how many specimens they have? Pinned specimens, like the ones that you just saw. Guess how many? 5,000, 1,000, 40,000, 50,000, 25,000. Between 1 and 1. 1.5 million. <laughs> Between 1 and 1. 1.5 million specimens. Okay, look at this. No, I might have put it in here. I don't think I did. I don't remember. If I didn't, I'll show you. But we met with a guy, and he's discovered 10 new bee species out there. And he pulled all these drawers out and showed them, showed us the specimens. Look! Tarantula hawk. Beetles. Hunts the tarantula. Harlequin beetle. Grasshopper. Look at the wings! Are you kidding me? Oh, okay. This is this is separate. We'll talk about that in a second. Okay, let me show you what this looked like. So. 1.5 million specimens. Okay. This is... Um, this is the guy that discovered 10 bee species. So cool. Um, showing us how the, the cabinets open. Hold on. So there are all these cabinets and they slide, right? And then I don't know if you can see that there are drawers, like, in there. But then... 
the insides look like this. Yes, he is a bit of a Brazilian Hassan. <laughs> yes, Mick, yes, okay. It's objectively, yes. <laughs> okay, and then this, and then they have like on here, they have like all, it's all listed out like what's in there, right? And then this is him show, he showed me his bees because he's like the most proud of these. He's really proud of his bees. It was really cool. Okay, so these are what the drawers look like. This is why there's so freaking many bugs is because all of these drawers look like that. And then there's this many aisles wow. of rows of drawers. <laughs> are you getting the scale? Hugo, thank you for the 34 months. Um, it was the coolest thing I've ever seen. These are some moths from there. Oh, frick. Oh, okay. Well, mm, mm, here. Moths. Okay. Big moths. Okay. Look at these bees. They're freaking purple. No. Rotate. Rotate. Purple. Frick. You get it. This was a bug Eduardo found in his hotel room. Or near his hotel. Um, so many cool bee species. He was so cool to talk to. Um, I asked him questions about like wingless bees and wing because we just because I just learned about fig wasps and we talked about that. Um, I asked him a bunch of questions about all the bugs I was seeing. It was so cool. Um, and so we have footage of that that'll be in the video as well. It was just so neat. Um, we also got to see like they have a ton of specimens that haven't been identified yet or haven't been like categorized yet. And so we went into this room where there's a ton of them like preserved in jars with alcohol. And so you have no idea when you walk in there how many of those are like species that haven't been described yet. Like I bet there are a bunch. Um, they went on a a 20 day expedition into this like mountain range, like with entomologists and ornithologists and, and whatnot. And they came back having identified like 40 species of, or 40 to 50 species of bugs and birds and reptiles or amphibians. Um, it's called the uh, National Institute of Amazonian Research, uh, but it's the acronym is INPA um, because in Brazilian it's, it's in. It's it's like or in Brazilian it's that's the acronym for, you know or in Portuguese. Um, so next to the next to INPA there's AMPA which is uh, Friends of the Manatee Association. They have manatees, which I posted on my Twitter. A bunch of people don't know that there are manatees in the Amazon, me included. Um. Look, he's drinking. He's lost in the sauce. Okay, ignore that. So small, so cute. There are four species of manatees. Uh, the smallest species is called the Amazonian manatee. And it's only there. In the Amazon. So this is like a, a marine mammal research or rehab center. So they find manatees that were either caught up in fishing nets... Um, or injured in the wild, or orphaned in the wild. And then they, they <laughs> sure, Joe. And then they rehabilitate them there, and then do a release into a pond in a private area, and then release them into the wild. And they've monitored some of the, some of the manatees that they've released in the wild, and they've had females that have been pregnant, um, or that have gotten pregnant, and so they're, like, doing really important work because they're, they're vulnerable. Um, so it was really cool we got to see them. I have a whole video going out on YouTube that is just about that facility, like just about the manatees. It's like a vlog, basically, because um, we did interviews with the veterinarian there and we asked a bunch of questions um, and about like how it works and how the release works and um, and all that. We got to see giant river otters 
uh, that, here, I'll show you a video. I don't think I posted it. No, I did. I did. I thought I did. Maybe I didn't put it as a highlight. I could have sworn. Oh, I did. Okay, we'll get to it in a second. Um, Maya was scared of the otters. Dude, they're like six feet long and otters are scary. And they're like, they, they're very chaotic. I saw these squirrel monkeys. That's one with a baby. Pretty cute. And then this is, do you guys, well, I said it in here, but have you guys seen this animal before? I've never seen an agouti. And they were everywhere in this, in this preserve. It's like a little rat capybara Patagonian Mara thing. Deer. <laughs> He's a goofy looking little guy. That's an agouti. This is a black caiman. Black caiman, we were talking about this in Brazil. We thought that caiman were really small. I don't know about you guys, but when I think of caiman, I think of like, you know, like three footers, Matt, you know, like I, I think of them being like this big. Most caiman are small, but this one species, black caiman, can be like 15 feet long. Uh, you can probably tell this is a really big caiman. Um, this was in an enclosure. This is at the preserve uh, that I was at with the manatees. These are the giant river otters. They're non-releasable. Um, these ones, or they had originally, they got river otters because somebody like found babies and then fed them fish in the wild and then they became terrors. <laughs> And became like a danger to people in the community because they like knew that people fed them. So they were put in captivity. Um, and that's how they got their first river otters. Um, and now they have like a few non releasable otters that they use for education there. Um, but you tell me that this isn't scary. Like it's really cute, but they're six feet long. That's scary. And they move really fast. So these are in um, the river otters and the manatees. These are all in. This is going to be the first Brazil video that comes out. Is going to be a like manatee vlog thing. And then I don't know how long it's going to take Flip to do the purple martin. It should be manatee vlog, purple martin video, Brazil vlog, Brazil vlog, maybe Brazil vlog. <laughs> Maybe three Brazil vlogs. There's 365 clips of footage. And for most vlogs, like for reference, the Streamer Awards vlog, there were 99 clips. Uh, my vegan restaurant vlog was 25 clips. Um, Vegas was like 95 clips. Uh, so 365 clips might be three vlogs. I don't know. But I filmed a lot. Um, so there'll be those vlogs, and then there'll be two Amazon videos. Um, with the interviews that we did, we also, we did an interview with, um, a guy from an indigenous community. It was very, very cool, uh, that Eduardo translated for us. Incredible. Um, so that'd be really cool, too. Caleb Blast, thank you. Um, yeah, they should be, those should be really good. Also, I'm going to put out a bunch of Instagram reels. I'm going to start sorting through content today. I'm really excited. Today will be my first day, like, seeing any of the footage on my computer. I'm really excited. And I'm going to start putting out Instagram reels. Um, so, yeah, here's here's these two. It's on my – it's in a highlight on Instagram if you want to go follow them. Oh, check this out. <laughs> I realized I had just posted um, – like, go follow these organizations. And then I was like, Joe, I need you to take a picture with me. And he's like, in the parking lot? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> this is Joe, PMCA president, CEO, Purple Martin Conservation Association. Also on Alveus' board of directors. Joe took me and Flip around this whole trip and was kind of like our dad. Our non-Brazilian dad who understands Brazil because he's been there like 15 times. <laughs> he said absolute legend. That's crazy. I climbed a tower 
at four in the morning that was 140 feet tall to get a 10 second long intro for my YouTube video. But look at it, it's beautiful. That bright at 4am, we were up there for hours. We were trying to watch the sunrise up here, but it was really uh, foggy. Um, oh. <laughs> it was really foggy, but it was actually really cool. It was like you either got the, the sunrise over the rainforest or you got this like really cool like mist fog going through it. And Flip and I both were like, you know what? This is more rainforesty. So we're just gonna stick with this and not try to get a sunrise and go again. Also, we didn't want to get up at four to go again. But it's so cool, it's beautiful. And then I found this big tree. It's really big. Let me show you a better view of um, the tower. Here, I took this as a thumbnail. Here's this, a spoiler. <laughs> There's me in the Amazon rainforest. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, it was pretty high up. Pretty high up. It was cool. It was cool. Okay, here's me with this big tree. Rainforest ASMR. pretty loud okay. here's this cat that was at the uh the museum of the amazon musa this is where the tower was they had this cat and there was this dog and outdoor cats are still bad but this cat was really it friendly the fear that mice typically have flip is talking as... ignore him <laughs> what's his name i don't know i didn't ask but he was really friendly it's pretty cute Here's me with a giant sloth skeleton. <laughs> Flip took a couple pictures of me. Some of them were fine. I just thought this one was funny. <laughs> so I posted this. <laughs> um, but yeah, giant sloth. Um, there are still, apparently, there are some giant sloth burrows that are like still there, which is insane to think about. Um, but yeah, this does not really do the size of it justice. It was massive. Uh, yeah, there used to be giant ground sloths. And giant, uh, giant, like, gators. Here's me with it again. Here's a butterfly at the museum. They had a butterfly house. Wow. Another one. Look, what a good ambassador he is. He was sitting next to his sign. Wow. Another one. Wow. That was my Instagram story highlight. What do you think? Let's see what vlog footage I could show you. Without a spoiling. Spoiling. Camp A. Thank you for the six months. Um. Brazil. La, 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 la. Maybe I just let you see this in the vlog, actually. Yeah. I'm not going to show you vlog footage. You guys see it in the vlog. Otherwise, it's spoilers. No spoilers. Um. You'll see it in the vlogs. You'll see it in the vlogs. <sighs> Poppy's doing great. Um, food there. D buddy, thank you for the twenty five uh months. The food there was really good. Um, the first vlog will be this Monday. It'll be the the manatee one. I think. No, sorry. 
the next Monday. Next Monday. Um, food. Were you able to eat vegan in Brazil? No. Um, I ate a lot of beans. The beans there were so freaking good. Um, what else? There's a lot of fish there. Uh, Tangy spring roll. Thank you for the three months. Um, actually, all of the food was really good. The only one that I said that I cannot say was good is uh, I got a dessert pizza on the last day. And it was like Nutella and strawberries. And I was like, oh, it sounds great. Like on pizza crust, yum. Um, but there was mozzarella cheese underneath all the chocolate. And I was really, conf Joe and I were both really confused by that. And it wasn't good. But all of the other food that I ate there was so good. Like they had really good stews. Um, they had really good meat. They had really good fish. They had really good beans, um, rice, yogurt. So yeah, that's a classic here. Oh, that's not normal here. Oh, well, now I'm confused. <laughs> How is the termite? I did eat termites uh, at the at the indigenous community. Um, they were fine. They really they tasted like corn nuts. But then they also wanted me to eat a uh, grub, which is like this, like this thick and like probably this big, and uh, it's like a, it's like giant beetle grub and they said it tastes like coconut, but there's just a lot of like juice in there and it like explodes and I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. It was also alive. So I just, I couldn't do it. I felt really bad. Um, so I didn't eat that, but I did eat termites. So they were good. One of the last days we were there, me, Flip and Joe were all going to get dinner and I wasn't here for this conversation. I was just there for the tail end. But um, Joe and Flip were sitting in the lobby talking, and this lady leaned over, and she's like, oh, my God, do you guys speak English? And they're like, yeah. And she was on a cruise with her husband, and her husband got She's from Texas. She's on a cruise with her husband. Her husband got an infection on the cruise, and then they dropped them in Manaus. And her husband's in the hospital, and she had to get this hotel by herself, and now they have to get arrangements to fly back to Texas. Isn't that crazy? Like, I, I can't imagine. It was, like, sometimes overwhelming for me, and I was very prepared to be there. And I had Joe there. And Eduardo, and, like, other people who knew me and, like, spoke English. You know, I, I cannot imagine being dropped there with your husband being not there because he's in the hospital and not speaking any Portuguese and not knowing how safe the area is. It's not, it's not like super unsafe, but it's not safe. Like you can't, like I, she can't just like walk around, you know? Um, oh, that's nice, Joe. Cool. Uh, but yeah, she was like asking Joe, like, how do we get back? Like what airports do we fly through? Like what, <laughs> what do we do? I felt so bad. Um, so, yeah, that was really, that was really crazy. Um, but yeah, it was, I, I had no problems, like, obviously didn't get anything stolen, no, I didn't get mugged, like, everyone was really nice. Um, I bought a bunch of stuff, uh, as gifts for people, um, I bought a bunch of stuff from, that indigenous people made, I bought a bunch of stuff from local communities, um, and I bought some other fun stuff too, um, I guess I could show you all the stuff that I got. And just hope that other people, that people don't watch. A haul? The goats love the flute. I got Connor a uh, a slide whistle from that, that community of like 17 families. I feel really bad. I had to apologize to Kayla. Brazil haul? Okay, it's in my, uh, it's in my truck. Oh, I can't. My truck is down at the studio. Sorry. <laughs> Never mind. Um. <laughs> space. Space, we have to do a haul. Time for a run? No, I ran up here. I don't want to do that again. Yeah, actually, Space, could you? 
I'm sorry, that gate is... The gate is closed. Anyway. Oh, did you drink Goran? I don't think so. I don't think so. Overall, the experience was amazing. The Amazon rainforest is amazing. Um, and it is a trip of a lifetime kind of thing. It was really, really humbling um, to be around people that live there and are studying those animals, ornithologists, biologists, master students, you know, that are like actually there doing the research um, and to be a part of it. And it's, it's such important work um, and my job is to to teach people about that work so that people know what's going on. Um, and so it was just like a real honor, you know, to learn from them and then to be able to use my platform uh, to teach people about what they're doing. Because I genuinely, I think it's so vital. It's so important. So it was really cool to be a part of that. Um, also, one of the biggest takeaways, I learned a lot um, in in general. But did you eat acai? Okay. Yes, I did. Uh, I have a, I have an American problem because acai here tastes like Jamba Juice and it's like really, really sweet. Um, and it tastes like a, you know, tastes like a sugar smoothie. And I had acai in Brazil once and there's like no sugar in it at all. And I was really alarmed. Um, but that's, you know, me being an American and being addicted to sugar, I guess. I didn't have Dr. Pepper for two weeks. I had my first one yesterday. One frog. Two frogs. Yeah. Um, frick, what was I? Oh, I learned a lot. Like, a lot about conservation, a lot about the birds, and a lot about, just like in general, I had a lot of really great conversations with some pretty amazing people. Um, but one of the things that I think I had to go there to learn, and I'm really, really glad I learned is visiting local communities and visiting indigenous communities. I've always heard organizations like Rainforest Alliance and Amazon Watch talk about how important it is to support the people that are living there um, and support the livelihoods of people that are living in the Amazon or living in other rainforest, rainforests. Um, and I never understood it until I went there and saw them and met them. Um, so I learned how important it is to support the livelihoods of the people sharing that land um, firsthand, which is really important for conservation. I think it's something that I've been, it's a puzzle that I think I've been missing in my conservation brain for a long time. So that was good. Does it motivate you to do more traveling in the future? I would love to go back. I think there's things that, I think there's more things that I want to do. And I'm really excited for the videos. Do I like traveling? No. I don't. I've never liked traveling, though. Um, it doesn't have to do with where I'm going. Like, I've, I've had some really amazing trips, and this was one of them. Uh, but I'm just not a traveler. <laughs> you know? Um, I'm just not a... Too much stress? Uh, I don't know. I just like being home. <laughs> And I, I like being with the animals and I like doing my job here and I don't like leaving things behind and falling behind and um, change. Some people are really good at it and I, I don't think I'm one of those people, but it was cool. Yeah, I do have other work um, to do if I go back. I have a, I met some people out there that, that want to do, uh, do more stuff, so it could be really cool. One of the guys you'll see in a, a video, his name's Mario. Um, he's an ornithologist. Um, he's discovered, like, or he's helped describe 15, I think, bird species out there. He grew up in Massachusetts, and then he moved to Brazil, and he's lived there for 30 years to study the birds. Fascinating guy. Um, and he would like to do some more stuff, which is amazing. It's so cool. He showed us the bird collection at that place. So the insect collection that you guys saw with all the drawers, they have that for birds, too. Um, and he, he showed me them and it was really interesting. So some of those will be in the video. I'll do Instagram reels of those too. Um, it'd be awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Drewy. Thanks for the 56 months. Uh, 
Felipe, thank you. My favorite part, probably the insect collection. Probably the bugs. Can you show us any pictures? I went through uh I went through my whole Instagram highlight. If you want to see them, they're on my Instagram. There's a highlight on my profile. It's called Amazon, I think. Or you can just go back in the VOD. I showed them. Um Oh, space. Why did that happen? I don't know why that happened. Okay. Um, okay, so I got staff, my staff, a bunch of these things. They're uh little figures made out of wood. Um they make them out there. They're cool. There's a manatee. Um, there's a they have pink river dolphins out there. Saw some of them. Really cool. Um, so, pink river dolphin. Another manatee. Little manatee. So I brought these back for staff at Elvis. Um, I got this for my mom. <laughs> it's a sloth. And it has a baby on it. It's his head. Look, it's a baby. And you hang it. This is for my mom. I got this at uh, that community with the 17 families, the really small one. Um, I spent like 100 USD at this community. Eduardo thought I was nuts. Um, I got this for my brother and his wife. It's a pink river dolphin bottle opener because she loves dolphins. I got these for my niece and nephew. <laughs> Pink River Dolphin and the Gray River Dolphin, because they have both in the Rio Negro. Uh, it has the Brazil tag, cute. The stuffies. I got these at a market um, that we went to. I got these for my sister from that community. They, they make them out of acai. Um, it's uh, a sea little sticks, and then they dye the sticks. They are heat resistant, so they're hot pads for the kitchen. I got this for my sister and her girlfriend. Um, Brazil nuts for my dad. Uh, I got this stuff for cutie. Uh, this is, it's like a little boat and it has candy because she said she wanted candy. And then um, I got her beads because you know how cutie is with her beads, except these are made out of acai. They dye them. Hooray, beads! Okay. And then... Uh, I got this for my boyfriend's brother. It's a slingshot. It's a little splintery, but I think that makes it nice and authentic. Pretty cool. It's either going to be like the best slingshot ever or it's going to be a piece of shit. I don't know. Um, I got his girlfriend beads as well because she likes crafting more acai beads. Um, I got some candies and some more Brazil nuts. Are the candies i don't really know what they are i think they're like chocolate ones fruit and chocolate candies um this is what i got for uh peach and rune i haven't told them that i got them anything so don't go tell peach that i got her these things or rune <laughs> but i got them hairpins 
Um, there's a manatee one and a fish one because Peach likes fishing. Um, and I got them earrings too. These are for Peach and these are for Rune. These are cool. They're like little trees with stones. Um, I don't know if Peach's hair is long enough for a hairpin, but... Whatever. Uh, and then... Here was my... Oh, look, this is my holy grail. I got this for myself at that community. It's a purse. And it has freaking Brazilian animals on it. Look, there's a sloth. I saw sloths out there and birds. Sloth and butterfly and parrots. Um, there's also a tiger, which makes no sense. But ignore that. Um, isn't that cool? So cool. Um, and then, this was, I have an earring haul, okay? I decided the earrings out there, hey Bryce, the earrings out there are just way, way cooler than they are here, and I could not stop. Ask Joe. It was crazy. I, every time we went somewhere, they were like, another pair of earrings? And I was like, yes. I have bought so many earrings. Okay, um, one, these, this is, uh, Arapaima. Which is, do you know what Arapaima is? No. I don't know how to spell it. Arapaima. It's this giant fish. Yeah, yeah, it's this giant fish. They're huge. Huge, right? Um, and they eat a lot of them out there because they're, they're in the freshwater rivers. Um, and they're obviously massive, and their scales are really big. So this is a byproduct of the fish that they eat. Um, and they use the scales to make earrings. Let me take them out so you can see through the plastic. You can see like the texture of the scales, and then they and then they dye them um, as well. Look, you see their fish scales. Like, so cool. <laughs> They're so pretty. Earrings. Mm -hmm. Earring number one. Earring number two. Are you freaking kidding me? It's ridiculous. Look at these. They're beautiful. They're beaded. Freaking beautiful. Amazing. These ones. The other one's in there somewhere. These I got from that community as well. I don't remember what they're made out of. I got this bracelet. It's made out of a a pit, like a, a nut pit or a fruit pit. And they cut them up and they dye them. I thought it was pretty. You're going to lose your minds. Look at this. Oh, it's Brazil nuts. Cool. It's freaking Tico. Hello? Tico. Beaded Tico. Oh my god. So cute. And then look at these. There's little trees in there, and the trees have little rocks. Dr. Cogdill, say any social media or anything so cool. Rebecca. There's a cardboard. Uh, no, it doesn't. No, sorry. It has a brand on it, but I don't know that you can, like, buy them online. If... But there you go. <laughs> anyway, they're very cool. Um, I, I got a lot of earrings. I'm very excited about the earrings. I got myself a hairpin as well. Whoever made it, like, wood-burned. It says a more. I think that's what it says. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought it was cute because it was a heart. Um, so I got that. And then I already gave my boyfriend stuff. His favorite animal is a toucan. And they have toucans out there, so they have a ton of toucan stuff. So I got him like a keychain and a little figurine and um salad tools that are uh 
toucan shape. They're really cute. Um, so that's my that's my haul. Hairpins. Look at your WhatsApp. Thank you. Eduardo just sent me a picture of this bug. <laughs> That's a nice bug out there, dude. I can't believe I'm missing that. <laughs> That's a nice bug. Thank you. Um, look at... This is how a hairpin works. I'm gonna mess it up, but look. Can you see the back of my head right now? I can't see you. Can you see... Can you see the back of my head right now? Yes or no? Yes? Yes. Yes. Do like this. You spin it a little bit, then you put the pin in here, then you go went, 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 then you go like this, then you go went, then you go went, and it's in there. Except I did too low. So ah! Wait, I'm going again. This is my first hair hairpin, okay? Nobody freak out. Why am I why is it falling out? I swear I did this like five times in Brazil and it was not a problem. So clearly it's the country that's the problem, not me. Okay, freaking standby on me going to watch tutorials of hairpins so that I have to spin it the other way in the Northern Hemisphere. Oh, frick, you're so right. Of course. Hello? What is going on? Why is this working and now it's not working? It's because you guys are watching. Man, this only works in Brazil. Forget it. Guys, today is Wednesday. Things that are happening this month, collabs that are happening this month, should be, I don't have a date for it yet, but we should have Super TF coming out here this month. We have Trihex coming out again this month um, because uh, Antivenom wants to see it, and so we're going to do just like a tour, not a full-on collab, uh, but it'll be pretty chill. So we'll have Super TF, we have Trihex, and we have Jack Manifold again who may or may not be bringing Tommy in it, and may or may not be bringing Jan Dan Clancy. All of that is happening this month. Um, I'm going to do another, like, maybe, I don't know if it's going to be animal sex or what, but I'm going to do another one of those streams this month because it was doing it's doing really well on YouTube. I don't know if you guys have seen that. Um, it's like 500-something K on YouTube. Um, so I'm going to do another one of those this month. Uh, I'm going to say the new ambassador this month um i we have winnie's birthday this month on march 22nd um we have p.o box this month next tuesday uh, there's a schedule on the alvaeus channel if you do command schedule you'll see all of this uh and so many youtube videos from brazil like six youtube videos from brazil not all this month once a week um so next couple months it should be really great um Packed month. Yeah. Everything's going good. I'm really happy to be back. Uh, thanks for not leaving forever. I was gone for two weeks. Um, I hope you guys entertained yourselves on the uh, the Alvaeus channel. Um, this month I will be streaming Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 12 p.m. CT. So you'll see me there Monday, Wednesday on my channel, Friday on the Alvaeus channel. 12 p.m. CT. And yeah. 
Yep, wine about it back, obviously. Um, Push Pop was on the Alvea channel yesterday. Go check out the Alvea Sanctuary Highlights channel on YouTube if you want eight minutes of Push Pop ASMR, eating ASMR. Someone asked if Variety Wednesday is coming back. Interesting you bring that up. I asked Wahido to come up with some stream ideas, like to, to jot some down. And one of his ideas was call all of the former collaborators that have come to Alveus and test them and then rank them. Or like, or like put them on a tier list. And I was like, that's a really good idea. <laughs> so I messaged like 15 people on Twitter yesterday, asked for their phone numbers. Um, so I'm going to do that coming up. Um, that'll be good. Um... You said in March you were taking much needed time off. No, I said March would be easier than February. <laughs> um, and it should be. February was a mess. I think March will be fine. Uh, I brought crumble cookies to Alves today because, um, Lindsay graduated. She is done with school. She got her master's. So at, when you're on the Alvea channel next, make sure you say congrats to Lindsay. That's a huge accomplishment. Very cool. We're all very excited for her. Um, Masters in Conservation of Marine Predators. Shark gal. Or you can call her Master Lindsay if you'd like. She probably wouldn't mind that. <laughs> um, I will see you guys this Friday for keeping, and then I will see you Monday um, for the next stream after that. Oh, and I'll see you. Uh, Saturday for Volunteer Day. Uh, Winnie Wednesday is today, so Winnie Cam on the Alvaeus channel if you want to go watch Winnie Wednesday. See life through the eyes of Baby Cow. Thank you all for waiting for me to come back. You have your- Oh, frick! Damn it. Don't go anywhere. Ah, oh, damn it. Don't, ah, oh, frick. <laughs> Please. Their pizza's big enough. Don't leave! Uh... <laughs> sure is. But the town ain't. Dude, the budget for this trailer must have been insane. It's like insanely well shot. Punch in the face might be fun, but sharing a fully loaded Red Baron with friends is always tastier. Yeah, that's about all we have time for today. Get up. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you for staying. Thank you for watching. All right, now I'm going to rate all this. Thanks, guys. Thank you, thank you. Boris, thank you for the 15 months. Seriously, thank you for not clicking out. That's really nice. Appreciate it. Um, I will see you very soon. 
I don't know when, but it'll be soon. Goodbye. 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 Boris, thank you for the 15. Goodbye. Beachings, thank you for the two months. Thanks. Goodbye.